Hello, I'm Trip Harrison here at Twyford Funeral Home, and uh, we have a continuation of our series today, What Happens When Someone Dies. As we all know, the, the loss of a loved one is a difficult thing to deal with, but there are lots of logistics beyond the emotional and, and spiritual challenges that we face. There are some decisions to be made. And in our continuing series here, we're going to be talking today with a guest who is an experienced member of the Twyford team. He's a licensed funeral director, and he's director of pre-need sales at Twyford Funeral Homes. And we're going to answer some questions, and hopefully that will guide you a little bit in making the decision about selecting a funeral home. But let's get right to the point. I'd like to welcome Presley Ely. Presley, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. We are going to talk about choosing a funeral home, and why don't you just uh, <clears throat> give us uh, some idea. In one of our previous videos, we talked about um, that you don't have to make a final decision on a funeral home at the time of death of your loved one, that another funeral home can pick them up. So after you've done, a family has done their due diligence, what now? How do they select a funeral home? Well, first off, um, honestly, it's, it's better to decide uh, what type of service you want. Um, so are you thinking traditional burial? Are you thinking um, cremation? Um, and, you know, veteran services, you know, who does a better job of that? Um, or even cultural um, differences in, in services. Um, so that would be a good starting point. And um, I would start by asking funeral homes, well, hey, what services are offered? Um, when it comes to funeral services nowadays, it seems like there's a lot of, more, a lot more challenges, particularly lately with the COVID-19 um, incursion. And uh, it's even though it's uh, improving a little as of now, uh, it's, it's still a concern. And even after COVID, there are those who cannot attend a funeral service due to their location, maybe due to an illness, their shut-ins or older people. Um, so what should you look for in a funeral home in terms of technology so everyone can be a part of that remembrance? Good question. So I'm, I'm having a younger generation, and most of my generation um, moved around. Um, so you'll have family. I mean, I have a brother that, that lived in Washington State. So different time zones, things like that. So this has always been a problem with funeral homes, um, being on different coasts. So the biggest thing is online obituaries. Um, I mean, if you've got an online obituary, make sure that it does update. Um, so that way families can research in the areas. Um, live streaming is pretty big. Oh, that's um, great. We do a lot of that um, here at Twyford Funeral Home. And um, it is broadcast to our Facebook page. Um, so anyone, anywhere can log on to their Facebook page and search for the funeral home and watch that particular service. Um, one of the things that started, I guess, when I came into the funeral um, industry in 2004 was the um, memorial tribute um, videos, the DVD memorial. So it's scanning pictures, and that's geared towards um, taking the conversation off of the loss but remembering the good times. Um, that was really big. And then one of the things that... Um, has, has become large since COVID is the uh, recording of services and the, the music and the eulogy and given to families for that keepsake. Well, that's a great way to, to relive the, the remembrance service and, and for those who, who couldn't be there. Um, there's an elephant in the room that uh, I'm sure people are thinking about when they think about funerals and it, it's something that we don't like to uh, dwell on, but it's important for everyone, and that is price. What can you expect in terms of pricing from funeral home to funeral home <clears throat> to make that selection? I say yes, cost is a major factor. Um, well, yes and no. Um, it's important to know uh, what the funeral home is providing. Always ask for a general price list. Um, get it in writing what you're getting and compare apples to apples. It can, um, you know, one funeral home may have like a package that includes everything. And one funeral home may advertise a package, but it doesn't include a hearse or something like that. So um, price is major, but I always say you need to uh, look at the value. Um, you know, the, look at what that funeral home is doing for you. How can you find out, how can you find out, get some objective opinions on, on a funeral home once you've established a price range that's comfortable for you 
Are there reviews for funeral homes? Is there a publication that you look in? So actually, a lot of times you can um, do a Google search. Um, there's Google reviews. I think um, there's actually Yelp reviews. There's there's all kinds of reviews out there. Um, and, and, you know, whenever I'm purchasing a major purchase, I always read the reviews. Um, so I don't really see any difference in funeral home reviews. I know the Better Business Bureau even has covered some... Uh, uh, issues and I, I think it's important when you look at reviews and you look at the Better Business Bureau on a funeral home um, that you look not so much at the problem that might have <clears throat> occurred because it, like any other industry there can be a problem or a difficulty or a challenge uh, in funeral arrangements but it's more important how it's handled so look for the resolution if the funeral home has responded to uh, the unhappiness of a family with any part of the service. And I think that's a really important thing so that you know that they're responsive. Um, now, I've mentioned before that I spent years working uh, in a private family-owned funeral firm in the beginning mm -hmm. uh, when I first became a funeral director. And then I took some time off and, and worked in another business. And then I came back to the funeral industry in the uh, early 2000s and worked for one of the corporate chain uh, chains that, that buy funeral homes. And I think we've mentioned this before on the videos, but uh, there are corporations, large national corporations, some are multinational, uh, that will go into an area and buy the small family-owned funeral homes, and they'll keep the name of that family-owned funeral home so that it's not perceived as a change in the, uh, in the community, um, and they're not perceived as a newcomer. Oftentimes, they'll pay the original principal of the uh, uh, funeral home to stay on board to see established families, so it doesn't look like a change. But when I got back into the industry and went to work for one of those uh, chain-operated funeral homes, uh, it was a completely different experience for me. I, I did not find it personally rewarding as a funeral director um, when I felt as though I were uh, representing a company instead of a family. Uh, who is dedicated to serve. Um, how important do you think who owns the funeral home is in terms of uh, serving the family? So I, I think it's, it's actually really important because I'll tell you, um, one, of the, one of the main reasons why I switched into pre-planning versus at need is because I'm the type of person that if I'm working with a family, I'll break down and cry right with you. Um, I believe that we that as an industry, when it's a, a corporation, it's more profit-driven versus helping that family member at that moment. So the moment that you experience a loss, you are part of that family. You're, mm -hmm. you're mourning with that family. You're doing everything in the world for that family that you can. And I feel like that's what a local funeral home is geared more towards, is that relationship versus what, what amount of money you spend. No, that's a good point, and uh, you do. I agree. You do get that more personalized feeling when you're when you're not representing uh, someone else's interest. You're representing your own right. interest and the interest of the family. And then one of the things I've run into when it's a, a corporate firm is a lot of times more things are outsourced um, versus having you know that same director doing the embalming process or that same director is the one running the crematory. So. Um, a lot of the you lose a lot of that tight knit connection when it's a corporate farm. My my wife is a medical doctor and she uses the term um, continuity of care, um, and which is I think what you get with a family funeral home is the continuity of the same faces that you deal with from the removal of your loved one from their place of passing uh, until the burial or, or the, the the cremation. Um, uh, cremains are returned to you, and I think that's a, a big deal. That's the extra step, and that's, again, uh, when, when the people who are serving you are the business, that makes it a much more personal thing, and uh, no, I agree. I've seen some funeral homes where uh, usually the facilities are, are, are nice in most funeral homes, but I've seen some staff that uh, could use a little uh, TLC training. Um, Absolutely. Anyhow, uh, there's a kind of a, a rising popularity in pre-planning funerals. Um, what, why is that? Why do people need to think ahead to, especially if you're not ill or if you're not very elderly, why do that ahead of time? So I'm glad you asked. Um, it just happens to be my uh, job. My only job here at the funeral home is pre-planning. Um, and, and I'm sure that a lot of firms in the nation are the same way. They have a person dedicated to it. Um, 
the planning ahead takes the emotion out of it and it makes it a smart business decision versus an emotional decision. And I think you and I had actually discussed this a few moments ago. Usually when you make a decision under the rest or under emotional times, you always make the wrong decision. Yeah. One of the questions that I always yeah. heard from a family member after the fact, did I do the right thing? Mm-hmm. Do you think that mom would have wanted that? Or And I mean, I've even run into situations because... People always tell their family, I've got my funeral information in my lockbox. Well, guess what? That's usually weeks after the funeral sure. before that's opened. Right. And then they find out, oh, Lord, you know, we buried mom, but she wanted to be cremated. Or, you know, so there's always that disarray that, that comes up afterwards. So a family member can make it so much easier by just taking an hour of time and writing down their wishes, and it makes a whole world of difference. It's also helpful, I think, too, and, and pre-planning has, has come along a long way in the last several years, and there are funeral homes, including <coughs> Twyford Funeral Home, where you can not only pre-plan your funeral, but pre-pay for the funeral yes. so that the, the family's not burdened with an expense or to be sure that if there's life insurance that... Uh, you, you can control how much of that is spent on um, your memorial and your... Uh, so, I'm, and I'm glad you brought up life insurance. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the advantages of prepayment, like when you write a check out for the service, um, a lot of funeral homes, in, including ours, um, we offer inflation proofing. So that means the services and merchandise, you never have to worry about them going up. Um, when you use your standard life insurance, um, that you know that's that's a standard contract, meaning you pay what it is that day. So that's the advantages of of, of inflation proof prepayment before using a sign on a life insurance policy. Um, the other side of it is, anytime you prepay, it is not considered an asset. So if you ever needed advanced medical care, so later in life. And no one wants to hear this word, but you had to go to a nursing home. Someone has to pay for that nursing home. Anything that um, you prepay is not considered an asset. And that becomes big when you're in the nursing home and need Medicaid to help pay the bill. You can only have $2,000 in asset. Well, I've prepaid the funeral. They can never touch it. So that's, that's a big deal. And then the other side is when you've waited too long, and you've experienced a loss, and there is no planning, there is no way to pay for it, the question you hear a lot is, do funeral homes offer payment plans? And I, I have to say, you know, there's a cost associated with everything when it comes to a funeral, sure. um, as in any other business. I mean, you have staff, you have, um, you know, insurances, everything like that. Supplies, that's, yeah. yeah uh, supplies, everything of those costs. They have a cost. And a funeral home does their services, and that's how we pay for the cost. That's how we pay for employees. Um, So a lot of times there aren't payment plans. Um, Now, you can um, look out at banks. So, you know, there's different loan companies and things like that that may do it afterhand. And um, some good news is, you know, most funeral homes take credit cards. But um, it's, it's always better to head this, pro- this issue off ahead of time by pre-planning, knowing a way to pay for it, than it would be to just, hey, this is what we're going to do and figure it out. So, Well, that, that's great advice, and it's really an important part of the arrangement process. So there's a lot to consider. We encourage you to visit with some funeral homes uh, in your area when you have the chance. When you go to a funeral, you know, make some mental notes so that if you are responsible for choosing a funeral home for uh, s- someone who has passed away, that uh, uh, you make the right decision, not just based on an instantaneous advertisement somewhere, but that you've done your homework. Thanks for being with us. I appreciate you very much, Presley, and we'll see you next time on When Someone Dies. Thank you.